smashing the four minute mile, we've celebrated those who have run fastest. Is there a way to make our mechanical systems, our bodies, more efficient and faster? To find out, I've come to Southern Methodist University in Dallas to have a friendly race against Don Miguel, a competitive sprinter from Trinidad. Left flat. Our timekeeper, SMU professor Peter Wayand. 18-4 for David. Wayand is a professor of speed. His lab is a high-tech lair equipped with ultra-fast cameras and a $100,000 treadmill designed to measure the force of a runner's step. Wayand believes that force is the key to speed, and he's about to show me why. How, how fast is this? It's not as fast as it looks. This is nothing! Gun it! Come on! Good. What do you got? Wow, I'm like a human cheetah. Look at that. It's magnificent. Yeah, you look great in slow motion. <laughs> Though I may be slow, when I looked at Don and me in slow motion, I was struck not by the differences, but the similarities. So what you can see is the time each of you spends in the air and the time that each of you takes to pick the limb up and put it back down in front of the body for the next step is about the same. And that's true, generically speaking, for, from Usain Bolt to little old ladies. Wayand has brought hundreds of runners through this lab, and it turns out that at top speed, every one of them, including me, spends almost exactly the same amount of time repositioning limbs in between steps, about 0.3 seconds. Our actual strides are happening, we're moving our legs the same speed? That's right, so when you're running- That guy and me? Competitive sprinter, you, a little old lady. Yeah. Our legs all go at the same speed. The time to reposition the limbs is the same at the top speed of each of those runners. So what makes Don faster? What the competitor sprinters do is they hit the ground harder. And hitting the ground harder makes your body move faster. When you put the graphs of Don's force and mine next to each other, the difference becomes clear. I'm hitting the ground with around 500 pounds of force. Don, 700. The only part I don't understand is, you're saying pushing down harder propels you forward faster, but it seems like pushing down harder would propel you up faster. I want to go that way. In the acceleration portion of a race, runners tend to lean forward so they can push backward. But that's a very short portion of a race. Wayan says after the first few steps, runners reach their maximum speed. From there, momentum keeps them moving forward. And the harder they hit the ground, the more time they spend in the air, and the more of their momentum they preserve. You push down on the ground with your limbs to pop back up so you can maintain your forward momentum. This all seems well and good, but if force is speed, how do I increase mine? Typically, what the very fast people do is, can we freeze it on the next contact? When this foot comes down, the knees should be in a good sprinter. Those knees will be right together. If you eliminate the forward lean, get more upright, have your body be stiff, and then you want to smack the foot down harder. Keep the body stiff. Slam harder. You felt the difference, didn't you? Yeah, I mean, it felt like a totally different kind of running. I, I couldn't have told you if it was faster. The peak forces before were running at about 450 pounds per step. The peak forces after are well over 500, 525 to 550. So that's a dramatic improvement in a matter of minutes just from implementing a short set of instructions. Wow, that's amazing. If you can do that for the entire race, you should come down by at least a half a second to a second. Dog! All right, body upright, rigid hips. Hit the ground, hit the ground, hit the ground. Four steps. Go! Understanding the physics behind how we run. There you go, 16-7. I shaved two seconds. Helped me more efficiently turn the energy from my muscles into speed. To go faster and farther with those same muscles, you'd need a machine. From the first dugout canoe 